Okay, so today we're going to talk about the counting principle and sample spaces. This is basically going to be our discussion on multiple probabilities. For multiple probabilities, we're going to need to multiply a lot of things together. Explanations to come. First of all, let's define a compound event. Two or more events that occur. They can happen either simultaneously, which means at the same time, or they can happen in succession, one right after another. The process will not change either way. The most important thing that we've talked about with probability is being able to find the sample space. The sample space, as you remember, in simple probability, becomes our denominator. To find the sample space with compound events, we create things called tree diagrams, or we can list what we call ordered pairs. You should be familiar with ordered pairs from graphing. Ordered pairs were basically our coordinate points. 99% of the time you will see me using tree diagrams in class and on these PowerPoints. I prefer tree diagrams. They're just a lot easier for me. They're very much more visual, but you are allowed to use either one. I will show you either one. Let's take a look at what an example would look like with three coin flips. Again, either simultaneously or in succession. Here's what a tree diagram would look like. Now it's going to come up all at the same time, but I will do my best to explain to you how this comes about. So here it is. Now you can see all the way over to the left there's an empty box there you do not have to have that there. As you can see I just placed a black X there. You can start it out with a dot or you can just branch off right away. With the first level you'll see two possibilities H standing for heads, T standing for tails. That's the two possibilities of a coin flip. The second level is the second coin flip. Each of the first possibilities, the head and the tail, are going to get two branches off of them, each being the same thing, head and tail. And there's a third coin flip, so we need the third level. And each one gets the two branches of head tail. You can see we can find our sample space by counting the number of branches all the way over to the right. There are eight total possibilities. Now if you wanted to do ordered pairs they would look something like this. The first ordered pair would be H H H heads heads heads. Remember we have three coin flips so we're going to need three things in the ordered pairs. I know it sounds weird to say pairs because we're used to saying pairs meaning two but in this case they have to be three. For me, if I had to do ordered pairs, I'd probably change the third one first. So I end up with head, head, tail. Then I'm going to change the second one. Head, tail, head. Then i got to change the third one back to tail. So I get head, tail, tail. Now I'm going to change the first one. So tail, head, head. Oh, got to go back and change the third one again. Tail, head, tail. Oh, got to go back and change the second one again tail tail head and then finally ending up with all three of them being changed tail 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 again you can see eight possibilities so it doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you get it right again I will tell you I absolutely prefer the tree diagram I'm kinda hoping you do too alright so let's take a look at an example for you to do use a tree diagram or ordered pairs list the sample space for a store that offers three ice cream flavors, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry, and two toppings, fudge and nuts. Now would be a good time for you to pause the video so you can have a crack at this. The answer will be coming up momentarily. Okay, so did you pause it? I really hope you did, and not just letting the video run through. Here's what the tree diagram is going to look like for that particular one. Again, don't worry about that box. I wish I could get rid of it on the PowerPoint, but I can't. So I just put an X over it. 
So I start out with three branches, the three choices, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. And again, noticing I'm using the lazy way, and that's perfectly acceptable. I can use the first letter of everything that I'm doing. Vanilla, V, chocolate, C, strawberry, S. Then each one of those has the choice of having fudge or nuts on it. So F and N branch off for each of them. Notice, we'll count the end, and that would be our denominator if they were asking us a probability question as a follow-up. Six items. If you're doing your ordered pairs, that's what they'll look like. Vanilla with fudge, vanilla with nuts, chocolate with fudge, chocolate with nuts, strawberry with fudge, and strawberry with nuts. Alright, let's talk about the counting principle. And this becomes something very simple for us because of a given situation. Think about it. If we had to do a tree diagram or ordered pairs for a place that had 30 ice cream flavors and 10 different toppings, that diagram would be huge. And you'd be screaming at me because I make you do all that work. Although, don't tempt me. Behave yourselves in class and I won't do something like that. So what do we do? when we use the counting principle. The counting principle tells us to multiply the number of possibilities from each event together. So in this case I have 30 ice cream flavors and 10 different topics. I'm going to take those two numbers and multiply them together. 30 times 10 gives me 300 different possibilities of an ice cream and topping combination at that particular store. Now we can also use the counting principle for probability. Think about probability for a second. What do we use? Fractions. So we're going to have to multiply fractions. So please keep in mind your rules for multiplying fractions. Remember that what we have to do, we multiply across the top, or multiply the numerators, and then we multiply across the bottom, or multiply the denominators. That gives us our final answer. Let's take a look at an example of where we'd have to use it for probability. What is the probability of rolling two dice and getting a five on both die? I probably should have put die there, shouldn't I? Oh well. So dice, that's one of our simple ones that we have to remember. Think about it. What is it? What's the sample space? Yup, six. What's the probability of getting a five on a roll? That's right, one out of six. I know you, I knew you knew it. So the probability of a 5 on the first dice is 1 out of 6. It's the same thing for the second dice. 1 out of 6. doesn't change because the die is different. So now I want a probability on both. I'm going to multiply those two fractions together. So the probability, and again, notice I'm using the P for probability. The probability of a 5 on both die is 1 out of 6 times 1 out of 6, which gives me 1 out of 36. Here's an example for you. This is just a sample space example. School cafeteria offers four types of salads, three types of beverages, and five types of desserts. If a lunch consists of one salad, one beverage, and one dessert, how many possible lunches can be chosen? Pause the video here to see if you can figure it out. Did you figure it out? I hope you did. We take the four salads, the three beverages, and the five desserts, and we multiply them together. Please do me a favor and use a calculator if you're having difficulty doing those in your head. You shouldn't, but let's always be sure and use a calculator. Check yourself with a calculator if you have to. 60 lunches is our answer. 4 times 3 is 12, times 5 is 60. Here's an example you might see on your homework. Most of you will be doing it in class tomorrow, but in case you want to try it tonight. A bag contains five bingo chips, one red, one blue, one yellow, one green, and one white. One chip is drawn, it's put back, then another is drawn. Make sure you read that last sentence real carefully because those two words, put back, are a big difference maker here. How many possible chips can be selected on the first draw? How many can be done on the second? 
How many possible ordered pairs exist? And what is the probability of drawing yellow twice? Pause the video here and give yourself a chance to answer those questions. Did you pause it? I hope so. Here come the answers. First draw, hey, we got five bingo chips, so we got five possible selections. That's our sample space. How many on the second draw? Those two words put back made a big difference. We got five possible selections on the second draw. So how many possible ordered pairs exist? Well, we have five from the first draw, five from the second draw. According to the counting principle, we multiply those together. That gives us 25 ordered pairs. So 25 will become the denominator for our last question. What is the probability of drawing a yellow twice? Well, let's think about it. One out of five for the first draw, and one out of five for the second draw. What do we get? One out of 25. If you have any questions, please write them down and bring them to class tomorrow. Your homework that you will complete in class tomorrow is textbook pages 613 and 614, numbers 4 to 10 evens. Please also bring your questions if you have any. I hope you paid great attention, and I will see you tomorrow in class.